First John um, 4, it said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. One thing to keep in mind is that the only thing that we could take to heaven with us, the souls, right? So, when I'm doing all these research, all this research and stuff like that, I, at first, it, it was more so for me because I had came from new age, you know, and I needed my answers and stuff like that. I needed my questions to be answered basically. Right. And through apologetics, I was basically able to get my questions answered through the text and realized that the stuff that I used to believe in was wrong. Right. And what I believe in now is that I'm saved by grace. And because I'm saved by this grace, I have to walk in the light. Read first John for that. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth, right? We don't want to be liars. We want to walk in that light. We want to walk in fellowship with God. So if we are saved and we are walking with God, we want to walk in that light. Now, I'll just be honest with y'all. Today, I sat down with a cult member, right? And I heard him and I listened to him go over his doctrine and explain everything to me. And I think the last time I spoke to him, it became a debate. Because when you hear somebody distort the gospel, it, it hurts. Because this is something that you respect and you hold highly and then you hear them make up stuff, take things out of context and make it say what they want it to say, right? And I've been there. So when I look now or when I was talking to them, I try to keep an open mind and understand that just like I was back in the day, taking the Bible out of context and stuff like that. And I believed it. They believe this too. And I don't think that there was anybody that would be able to come talk to me at that time unless they had like solid truth to get me out of that mindset. Because once you're in that mindset, it's really hard to get out because you could justify everything that you could you believe in. And most of these cults already have answers to all the questions because they they routinely bring people in. And the more that people ask questions, the more they're, they'll be able to answer because they can go back and be like, all right, I got this, I got that. We can get them on this, we can get them on that. Like, we got to make this connect somehow. What I would tell you as a Christian, even if you don't want to be an apologist, know your word. Because if you know your word, if you know your Bible, nobody could come and tell you anything differently. Nobody could come and tell you, oh, did you know that Jesus was Michael the Archangel? That's Jehovah Witnesses, right? If you know your word, you won't listen to them and be like, oh, for real? Can you show me? You know what I mean? Or, or, or you just start falling into the whole trap. That won't happen to you if you know your word. Or somebody comes to you and they say, well, Jesus isn't God. He's just a prophet. Muslims, right? 
they come to you telling you that if you know your word, you know that Jesus is God, right? He's the, he's the word. The word was in the beginning and the word made itself flesh and dwelt among us, right? And we know that the word is God, right? So you know your word, then you won't get caught up in these traps, you know? And then you also have to know how you're saved, right? Because there's two sides of this. There's the side of, I just say a couple words, that means I'm going to heaven and I can live how I want to, which isn't true. We just read, we have to walk in the light. So after we're saved, we must continue walking with Christ because we have to be examples for other people to see so that they may want to follow him too, right? We are called to be set apart for a reason. Right. Like I said in the beginning, the only thing that we could take to heaven with us is souls. And if we act in like the world and doing stuff of the world, nobody will take us serious. Nobody will take our walk serious and it won't it won't influence them to want to walk with God either. Right. But backtracking, know your word. Then nobody can send you down a different path. Right. And one thing I'm learning now is once you know your word and you come across these people, ask them questions. Explain this to me. You know, like I was talking to the brother today and he was talking to me. He was like, yo, we got to keep we got to keep the Sabbath, man. This, this and that. You see what happens when you don't keep the Sabbath, because in the Old Testament, it says if you don't keep the Sabbath. You should die. Right. And this dude was picking up sticks in the Old Testament and Moses and them on the Sabbath. He was picking up sticks on the, on the Sabbath and they they stoned him. Right. They killed him. So I asked them simple question. You guys can do this, too. I said, so if we don't keep the Sabbath. Do we need to die physically? Right. Should we should we go around, you know killing people if they don't observe the Sabbath. Oh, well, no, it's a spiritual death. And I said, show me in the New Testament where it says that. He can't. He can't. Show me in the New Testament where it says that you need to keep the Sabbath. Well, Jesus was in the synagogue. Paul was in the synagogue. This was happening. Show me where it says it. You know what I'm saying? Then he starts saying, well, the Christian, Christians nowadays, they believe the Sabbath is Sunday. No. No. We meet and worship on Sunday because the early Christians met and worshiped on Sunday. Because Jesus rose on a Sunday, we fellowship on a Sunday. Nobody, right, with any type of biblical knowledge would say that Sunday is the Sabbath. It's incorrect. But what they'd say is Sunday's a new Sabbath. That's why y'all, no, nobody said that. Saturday's a Sabbath. That's a fact. Do we have to keep the Sabbath? No. Jesus is our Sabbath. He's our rest. <sighs> My bad, y'all. But, but ask questions. And if you feel like you're not getting anywhere, I suggest just walking away or leaving the conversation because if somebody's firm in their beliefs, the only thing you can do in that moment is plant a seed. So at the end of this conversation, he believed what he believed. I believe what I believed. But I made sure to tell him a piece of my story, to tell him my encounter with the true Christ, with God, with the Holy Spirit. I, I told him what happened to me. And I told him how I came to the conclusion that I did. I said that every other religion, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, Roman Catholics, all of them believe that you can get to this heaven, Nirvana, be saved by the things that you do, the works that you do, how good you are. I'm not good. I'm not good enough to get to heaven. I need God's grace. So I looked at him and I said, 
the reason I believe in God's grace, his mercy, and that we are saved by faith is because one, every other religion says that I have to do something to get there. And we both know that, that we are sinners. We are not perfect. And if it was left up to us to be saved, we would not be saved. We need God. We need God. We need Jesus. Right? It's, and, and verses talk about it. You're not saved by your own doing, not by your own work so that you could boast. You're saved by faith in Christ Jesus. But they believe it's more. It has to be more. You got to do more. And I'm not saying that you can do whatever you want after you get saved. I just said that we have to walk in the light. But what I am saying is. It's not your works that get you to heaven. And we walked away. Him believing what he believes. Me believing what I believe. I don't know if he'll ever come to know the true Christ. But what I do know is what I believe. And all that we have is what we believe. All we have is God. Nothing, nothing else in this world matters. But to serve God every single day. That's it. That's all. So. Learn what you believe. Learn why you believe what you believe. So that when somebody comes and tests what you believe, you can always stand firm in your faith. I want you all to be able to speak when the time comes. Because sometimes people just need that seed. About seven Years ago, somebody planted a seed in me. I never forgot that person. Don't be afraid to speak. Open up. The only thing that we could take to heaven with us. Our souls. So proclaim the gospel. Preach the gospel. Read your word. Learn the word. Understand. And do the work of an evangelist. God bless you. I hope you have a continue having a great day. Have a good one.